Our class, welcome back to Cosmic Significance 2012. The unification of humanity was at hand, but no one could agree what it was. So, down to business. Marvi is having a psychic storm in the Harp Weather Control Center. See her floating in the air, eyes white with rage as computer panels, chairs and paper spiral in a world when Osona Stormy and Lisa are all hanging on to keep from blowing away. But look, here comes Smythe with his zappy gun and... I don't point that thing at me! You shot Marvy! And you too, fish girl. Oh, my head too! Oh. They're both out cold, Smythe, but the hopper has been destroyed, and now Hurricane Charles is heading for Jersey. Never mind that, dear girl. Ozona, channel Ujet and get orders. Uh, who do you seek? Oh, most slithery one, tell us what to do. Execute order 67. We shall sing them to sleep to nightmares. Oh, oh, oh. 67? But, Mommy, I don't want to be a... Oh, silence, daughter. It is your destiny. Now, Ujet will keep Marvi in a coma while we get on the next saucer to Saturn, but leave Tuna Girl behind. Yes, Mommy. Dante's alien baby was just a dream. In fact, the child emerged from the Papu while he slept, and in the morning he found her suckling from his hairy breast, safe at the Hopi Moon Callisto home to floating vegetable-shaped cities with watery glass petals. Dante was fine, except the new Hopi chief, Bowie, would not let him see his baby. Don't I get to name my own daughter? No, only the ancestors may do that. You may not touch her until we are sure it is safe. Safe? From her father? I carried her on my... You know what? Fine. Since I graduated from Hale University, I've been pushed around by all of you. I was, well, let's see, abducted at gunpoint by my benefactor, forced to be puppet king of the solar system by space cowboys, raped by a space Indian, impregnated by her, baby snatched by her kinfolk, all the while being chased by ancient mystical horsemen and trans-dimensional reptilian aliens. <sighs> Nobody even noticed that I turned 18. You know what? You can keep your little pod baby for all I care. I'll be at the modal node at the Freeport of Ganymede getting drunk. Roger, let me in and blast off. Hang ten, dude. Cowabunga. Ocean, Dante may be Bahana. The lost brother returned to us. We may still need him. Come, Bowie. Let's get her to the naming place. What news is there of the war, my chief? Bamberga and Hermione have fallen, and even the Flora family asteroids are now occupied by American and cruise equestrian forces. But most troubling, our Rin ships report that Gypto engineers are constructing a two-horned grapple to ensnare Enceladus. Pharaoh Amanadin himself oversees construction from his pleasure barge, and the river rings of Saturn. Why would they want to catch the moon and sell it us? I have a fleet ready to launch. We'll support the war now, Barry. According to our ancient Mayan calendar, Pictun V's sun is coming to a close, and the ancestors tell me Nampea was right to attack Mars. Six sun shall be the day of Hopi. We are at the naming place. It is time. Great ancestors, I hold above my head this trial of Nampea Raintree, preceded in spirit by all Hopi chiefs, and Dandy Day descended of all earthly royal blood. <laughs> Newborn of two worlds, unifier of humanity, show your original face and lead us now to your name. <laughs> but soft, like the light rising in the east, you will be called Sunflower Shining. <laughs> Sunshiny Day! Well, class, while the Hopi plan ahead for Pick Tune 6, let's tune into Dante as Roger 10-4 lands on Jupiter's largest moon. 
Dante's ear cuff seemed stuck on the audio tour of the solar system in the voice of his deceased robot girlfriend. Aww. Roger, put us down in the main square. Be inconspicuous. I'm going into this bar. Yeah, dude, I like just fall up into a street there. Hello, welcome to the modal node. I'm Honoria. Your skin is blue and iridescent and glowing. <laughs> New to the Freeport, huh? Would you like a blue beer? Um, yeah, thanks. Now onto Saturn's largest moon, Titan. See the humongous green planet rise in the fluorescent sunset. Purple methane waves crash on the shore. Pharaoh Anamatan has built a mile-high pyramid palace. Let's peek into the harem suite. See? Stormy is being groomed for her new role in unification. Daughter, circumstances demand flexibility. So here's the new plan. Ujet will sing a song through you. It will top all crossover charts on December 21st, the day they're wedding to the pharaoh. See, daughter? We can still give Pindar his unification. A live concert will focus the energy of the whole solar system. Tuned in to see the Virgin Bride perform naked from the golden capstone, floating above the Pyramid Palace. <gasps> but, Mommy, I don't want a golden capstone. Don't interrupt while I hatch evil eggs. You will have a pharaonic wedding and a sacrificial deflowering in front of live audience of billions. <laughs> but I don't want to be a rock star. I want to marry Josh. Silence. It is your destiny. <laughs> now get into that studio and let your jet call the tune. I will leave the seance out here while you sing. <laughs> yes, Mommy. Right away, Mommy. Oh, Masa. Oh, Pinda. Oh, scaly ones. The song start accuses Formula 9 melody to create feelings of doubt and fear. The catchy hook and dance beat. Oh, Maldek. Pinda. <laughs> Jet, imbue this recording with your dark energies that it may enslave our sheeple in your name. All hail Pinda. All hail Maldek. All hail Ujet. May the pop star Stormy Night be a focus for your feeding. Hail. Hail. Did y'all hear that? They just did the devil's tongue. <laughs> the class should know that a multi-vibrating bilabial lingual fricative, also known as the raspberry, <laughs> is really the devil's tongue. A reptoid salute, just like I was telling Liza. This time you're just making connections. Take President Denton, that picture with his tongue out. Or the first President Shrub and his son, Double Dew Shrub, both with tongues wagging. Uh, here's Bitsy Schmears, Pop-Tart with her tongue out. And even Alpert Einstein says, Y'all? I'm telling you, it's not a lizard symbol. The presidents are just showing their support of the Tea Party, and Bitsy is just being vulgar. And Keith Simmons, he's just being vulgar too? Oh, you mean Gene Richards? No, that really is the sign of the devil. Hey, you two! Out! Come now, class, let's float in the riverings of Saturn near Pharaoh Amunatan's pleasure barge, where he consults the ancient Book of the Head, a grimoire of interstellar travel. Oh, look, here comes Ozona! Your golden pompousness. The song Static has been injected into the massive media and is already creating a negative charge. Ah, construction at Enceladus is nearly complete. A thousand alien races will witness as I unify with Pindar and achieve immortality. Ah, uh, your little virgin daughter is a virgin, right? <coughs> 
Oh, yes, your manganese magnificent. Good. <laughs> now let's go pay a visit to our pleasure harem. <laughs> I'll get it. Day Strom Institute. May I help you? Glow, it's me. Please listen. Oh, Zona, you kidnapped my daughter again. Where have you taken her? I want to know. Safe in Ujet's embrace. <laughs> Saturn is glorious, Gloria. If only you would come back to us. You were a wonderful Hollywood ghostwriter. It's all in your head. That was your motto. Goodbye, Ozona. Did they fall for it, my pet? They think Ujet has her in a coma. It's a go. Now, class, back on the moon, Ganymede. Dante is still at the bar with the blind, blue-skinned bartender, Honoria. Last call, Mirthling. Everyone else has left. Oh my god, Honoria. I feel so drunk. You only had one beer. You nursed it all night. It must be you. A charmer, and handsome too. How can you tell? Aren't you blind? I don't have to see you to see you. We Anorians live in all space and time at once. You do too. You just don't know it yet. You must be naked before God. What do you mean? Hey, your clothes. They vanished. Mine too. Well, okay. How did you- Dante, I want to show you something. I think you already have. I shall give you what no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no hand has touched, and what has never occurred to the human mind. Can't we just- Hold my hand to your lips. Breathe out. Slowly. Hey, you're in my mind. Breathing together, we conspire. On the waves of space and time. Yes. Good. Let the waves wash over you and then slow it down. Just stop and be. My God, I'm full of stars. How did you... Who did it, Dante? Look in your mind, right there. Oh, it was there all the time. Now I see everything and every when. Look, dinosaurs. And over there, is that my daughter on Callisto? That way is the future, a possible one. And some kind of death ray, Earth. That's a negative timeline. Say. Why do the timelines all get murky after December? Dante, reality exists only in our minds. When consciousness breaks free of the physical, multiple timelines become available. Simply ride the astral waves to get there. Here's a tiny wave. It goes two feet to the left and two seconds into the future. Come on, jump. <laughs> it's like body surfing through time. Excellent. You may need practice. Or you might overshoot the beach and land in empty space. But every when is everywhere, Dante. Just ride the waves. First, though, I want you to feel this. Oh, you're glowing again. Yes. Now you do it. Me? Well, how do I... At Gaudia, there is no do or do not. Just be. Oh, yeah. That feels wonderful. I never knew I could do this. Everyone can. Smythe hid you from your family, just as the reptoids have hidden earthlings from their own light. But your light burns bright enough to enlighten the all. See that timeline? There. That future is as clear as a crystal ball. You need them. They need you. You must go back. I know. But... 
Yes? Well, I was hoping to kiss you. They warned me Earth boys are easy, and I know far better than kissing. Ozona, I know you hear me. Gloria, how did you get in my mind? Stop it. But oh, it's what all the kids are doing these days. Face space crashed when Marvy was unplugged. So now they just ping with their minds. 2012, you know, honey child. And humanity is on the verge of psychic enlightenment. Gloria, get out of my head. It's personal space. Is that what you tell Ujet? You won't win, Ozona. Go. After Tanake rescued me from Atlantis, I have been on the frozen scurrier planet series, basking in vindication. <laughs> and yet, my old rival Smythe had become a more dangerous foe than ever. Father Kinnikin sat on a floating carpet counseling me when Tanake returned with the fish girl. Welcome, Liza. This is Don von Eiken, formerly of Hale University. Like Marvi, von Eiken sees truth. So he will document unification for Scurious. Now, you must all prepare for orgy. <laughs> nom, nom, nom. Come, sit on carpet, children. Let us float into Scurrier archives. Nom a nom. Our hollow records. Over a hundred thousand years. Nom a nom. Nom a nom. Oh, no, no, no. Most sacred records are... Jacosta Fresco. The hollow prophecies of Mother Fresco. Nom nom nom. Ah, nom 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 nom. Ah. Yes, here they are. For millennia, final fresco recordings remained locked in this crystal. Use Kundalini key and unlock with your mind. Nom, 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 nom. Yes, Father. Um... Nom, 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 nom. <gasps> oh, look! A 50-foot hologram! Nom nom nom, my children. Mm, nom nom. The Skinner Council has chosen a who? Mm. A who? Who? A you, Tanaka! Nom nom nom. You will pose as potente who of 511 Davida? Mm, nom nom nom. Who will go to Amunatun's wedding? Who? We'll take Lisa and present her as Green Mermaid Slave Girl. Nom, 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 nom. Do you really think I can pull this off? You will do fine now, go. Nom, nom, nom. What about Dante? Is he ever coming back? Roger, 10 4. Auto recall activated. Uh, nom, 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 nom. Oh, Dante not inside. Roger is flying carpet on which we sit. Dudes, do that. Whoa! Roger, stop! That tickles! Where is Dante? God, he went like, Cowabunga! Yeah, in astral space. Wherever he goes, there he is! Never mind him! Now go, my children! Odgardia! Whoa! Cowabunga time! Cowabunga! Tune in your minds to the moons of Saturn, December 19th. 2012, Ozona is hatching more eggs. Now, Pharaoh, daughter, let her view. When Stormy begins her song, naked, of course, Sujet will be joined with her. As you reach the crescendo, Stormy, you will mount the mount of him? <sighs> but he's a... All of humanity will watch as your virginity is sacrificed to a reptoid ruler, generating the most massive influx of energy in 10,000 years. 
Mavi will be crucified on stage behind you, where she will soak up the energy until we are ready to unleash it and rebroadcast the signal directly into the Eye of Hathor. Why do I have to be sacrificed? Ah! Forgive her outburst, wedding day jitters. Stormy, you whiny diva. Go spike that green hair. Take off your clothes and put your combat boots on. I want the pharaoh to see your wedding outfit. It is your... Destiny. Destiny. Yes, mother, right away. Gloria, my love, have you been tracking static in the massive media? Yes, darling. Face space is still offline, but the Twitter feed has 13 billion hits, non-stop wedding coverage on all 10,000 cable channels, and 16 MyTube mirror sites. And that's just Earth. The entire solar system is tuning in, Caesar. Oh, look, the Sonic Circus special is about to begin. Welcome to this live presentation at the end of the great Maya Picton Five Sun. That's right, Sam. Here at the Pyramid Palace, Astrati nobility are lining up on the red carpet. <gasps> There's the King of Sedna in his red robes. The Maharaja of Varuna in a digital sari. And the ever-conservative Eeny Meeny of Europa. Oh, and look at that outfit on the Crown Princess of Xena. Is that an orangutan she's wearing on her head? And folks, I don't believe it. Look who's just arrived. Is that Irulan and the moles of Zizibu? <gasps> oh, Sam! After the last gift is presented by Potentate Who, Stormy will sing her hit song, Static, step into the sunstone sling, and be lowered onto the pharaoh at midnight. Oh, Sam! <gasps> so? Yes? <gasps> yes! Uh, yes? Uh, thank you. Now, folks, let's watch Sal's interview earlier today with Stormy Knight. Sam, we're backstage at the greatest rock concert and celebrity cherry-popping sacrifice since Teotihuacan. I'm with Stormy now in her dressing room in a rare moment when she is not being possessed by the Reptoid Ujet. Tell us about it, Stormy Darling. Everyone is watching. Mommy says all Strati have a role to play. And I've always wanted to be a rock star, haven't I? <laughs> it must be nice to be a princess bride. Well, the celebrity perks are quite brilliant, actually. My suite here on Titan is inside the cryovolcano. It shimmers at night when I am alone and Ujet is checking in on Ma. Um, mm -hmm. everyone loves your song Static. Thank you. I, I'm just an instrument of the Lord. <laughs> the Dark Lord? If you're just tuning in, this is Sal Sonic interviewing pop diva Stormy Knight. We're walking from the dressing room to the stage. The band is warming up. Stormy, tell us about the pick tunes. Well, Jimmy Watt is on drums, of course. On keyboards, the artist formerly known as, I don't know. Um, our bass player, Beef Kitchard's called in. Strung out, really. Yeah. So we're short one, aren't we? Stormy, how do you feel about sacrificing your virginity before a live Holovision audience of billions? Well, as Mommy says, it's my destiny. <laughs> Stormy, I can't help but notice the unconscious girl you have strung up on the harmonifier. Isn't that marvelous day? Oh, her? She's just a dirtling instrument. She'll be played on the psychic level to amplify the emotions we feed into her. What do you mean? Oh, you know, Plato, Hitler-like, did it. But, um, Hendrix said it best. Music gets people at their weakest point. Hypnotize, you know? Um, so, you can, like, preach to their subconscious. <coughs> what, Uj? I, oh, it's, it is? Oh, and that ends our interview. Oh, now, class, let's go look at poor Marvel S. Day. Comatose and hanging on a cross. The reptoids want her unique abilities to amplify their death ray. Well, they just think she is in a coma. 
but Clever Marvy made a psychic party line. <laughs> Let's see what it looks like, yeah? Hello, Liza. It's me, Marvy. I'm calling you with my mind. Come join my party. Marvy! Mm. Now this is a party. Nice tiki heads. Is that a real bonfire? Mm-hmm. In my mind, yours too now. It's astral. Now, I've got the party all ready and there is plenty of room. I'm just listening to the Sonic Circus while I wait for everyone to arrive and what well, you know. Oh, oops, I gotta run, Tink. Tanaka, I, I mean who, is about to introduce us to the Pharaoh. Uh, Liza, wait! We're in astral space. You are still out there and in here. You can do both at once, sugar. I can? Oh, seems I can. So, Marvy, we are all alone in astral space. <laughs> yes, so we are. Now bring me those gills. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Sonic here with this news bulletin brought to you by Montauk Delivery Services. They know where your packages go, even if you don't. A battle may soon be underway for control of the iridescent moon Enceladus. Let's listen to this intercepted transmission. Smythe, you hollow shell of a man. Report. I'm trying, but Maldek is inhabiting the computer and keeps tuning in Reptoid Opera. My brother Pindar isn't here, so I'm in charge. At the moment, Maldek, you're just hal adjusted. Get it? Hal? No, what, Smite? Since my brother's not here. Oh, no, you don't, Maldek. No. <laughs> All systems go, my dear festering pustule. The moon is locked in place with cow horns, and our crew's equestrian space fleet is guarding it. <laughs> Initiate the connection, my drooling abscess. Yes, venerable wart. Activate the death ray. <laughs> that audio intercepted by the Hopi Spirit Fleet en route to engage the Space Cowboys. We now return to our special coverage of the unification on Titan. Where's the lamppost? Roger 10-4! Anuria, where did Roger go? The Akashic record shows that his auto-recall was activated by the Scurriers. He is on Titan. I have to go back. It's almost midnight, and we've been canoodling for... 96 days in three solar systems. Remember that sunset on Alderaan? Let's go back and... Anuria, thanks for everything. But it's time, babe. I got you. Dante, wait. Oh, dear. Dante had been practicing, but in his haste, he missed Titan by a few hundred kilometers and found himself floating naked with his head poking through an electric blue ring of Saturn, gasping for breath. Let's listen to his final thoughts, yeah? So this is it. <gasps> oh, I doubt even the overlords could get me out of this one. Saturn no, is the Veronica. river rings. Saturn's moon Titan is home to the floating pyramid palace. Okay, class, that's it for today. See you next time for our final lesson in cosmic significance. Cosmic Significance 2012 is written and directed by Dewey Davis Thompson and Elizabeth Brackman and is a production of Soundstage Radio Theater and Pirates and Angels Productions. Full credits and web extras online at CosmicSignificance.com. Significance.com.